Okay, to get started, you will need to start boiling two to two and a half pounds of potatoes. I am using russet potatoes today, but Yukon gold potatoes also work well with this recipe. You want to boil your potatoes until fork tender, not knife, fork. Okay, here in my pot, I'm going to add some canola oil to start to brown the ground beef. And I am using a lean ground beef. If you have a higher fat content ground beef, you might not need to put oil but I am using a 93% lean ground beef, so the fat content is very low. I'm just gonna go ahead and break apart my ground beef while browning it with a wooden spoon. And now I'm also going to add two pinches of kosher salt. And you wanna do this to your taste, but a half teaspoon is a good place to start. Okay, so now my ground beef is all browned, and now I'm going to add my vegetables. Here I have one minced onion, it was a medium-sized onion, two medium-sized carrots grated, and three cloves of minced garlic, and this is all going into my ground beef to saute. Okay, now my carrots are tender, my onions are translucent, so now I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of tomato paste. I also want to add, I am a big advocate of using what you have in your pantry, and if you don't have tomato paste, use ketchup. And if you don't have ketchup, because sometimes I find myself in that situation, use tomato sauce. Use what you have in your kitchen. You don't have to freak out. It's gonna work. I've used ketchup before and it tastes great. Tomato paste just goes into a classic shepherd's pie and cottage pie is basically shepherd's pie, only you're not using lamb, you're using beef. So it's interchangeable, it's not written in stone. It's just in a classic shepherd's pie, you can use tomato paste and that's what people used in cottage pie when they use beef. Moving on to the flour, I'm using four tablespoons of all-purpose flour and I'm going to sprinkle it evenly over the ground beef and I wanna make sure it coats the ground beef and it also cooks out. And this is what's gonna help give us that thick gravy to our beef. So just go ahead and sprinkle that all over your ground beef and just work it in and cook it out for about a minute or so. Okay, now that the flour has cooked out for a minute or so, I'm going to add my beef stock. I also added two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, and that also went into the beef stock, but you can add it separate, but that is part of the recipe. So now I've added my one and a half cups to two cups of beef stock, and this is actually where you want your ground beef to be as far as the gravy consistency. You want it to be really thick, and I actually added a little too much beef stock, but it's okay, it didn't ruin it. Um, it came out fine, but that's just a heads up if you get a little too saucy with the stock. <laughs> the next ingredient I will be adding is one bag of frozen peas, and I like a lot of peas, but you can use half the bag, or you know what, don't use peas at all, because again, there was a time I did not have a bag of frozen peas and I made this without it and it was perfectly fine. Sometimes I like to just add mixed vegetables, you know, the frozen bag of mixed vegetables, but today I will be adding peas. And also you can get the peas that has like the diced carrot. You don't have to grade fresh carrot. You can, you know, use frozen carrot with peas. So anyways, I'm not cooking this. I already turned my heat off, my fire off, and I'm just uh, mixing this in. I'm also going to add some cracked black pepper. I forgot to add that earlier, so be sure to do that. And after this, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my 
baking dish. Okay, so now I'll just be adding this into my two and a half quart Corningware dish. And this recipe, you can use a nine by 13 baking pan. It's perfect, but today I thought I'd just use my Corningware. After adding all your ground beef, just smooth out the top. Now on to my potatoes. I've mashed them all. Now I'm adding six tablespoons of butter. I'm going to mix that in. And now I'm going to add half a cup of heavy cream. And now I'm going to add kosher salt to taste. Again, just start with a little, or it's to your taste if you know how much you like your potatoes. Just remember you're working with about two to two and a half pounds of potatoes, so season accordingly. Now you're just going to mix. And I will say this, I like a nice stiff mashed potato for this recipe. Normally, of course, we all love creamy mashed potatoes, but you want it a little bit stiff. And here I'm going to be using extra sharp Vermont white cheddar cheese. I think it pairs well with this recipe. You could use any cheese you like. Again, use what you have, but this extra sharp white cheddar cheese just, uh, it goes well into the mashed potatoes. And now I'm going to add one egg yolk. And if you don't have an egg yolk, don't use it. It'll still work out fine. But again, in a classic shepherd pie, they use egg yolk in the mashed potato. And I think that helps bind it and set it up. So when you cut into it, it stays together. But again, you don't have to use it if you don't like it. It'll work just fine. So spread the mashed potato evenly over your ground beef. And I'm going to bake this in a preheated oven of 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Now my cottage pie is nice and bubbly. You can see around the edges and the top is golden brown. So I'm going to remove it. And I know I'm always giving you guys things to do when baking. And now you're going to have to wait and let this set up. So at least 30 minutes, but I like to let it go for a full 45 to an hour. And it's still warm after an hour, believe it or not, especially that I have it in my corningware. So yes, let this set up because if you just like dig into it now, it's gonna kind of like spread out all over your plate or the bowl. So you want it to kind of come out in a nice piece. So I'm gonna show you what it, uh, what it comes out like after 30 minutes. I didn't wait. I just wanna, you know, in case you're pressed for time, you wanna see what it looks like. I just dug in there, got a spoonful and ta-da. So it did pretty good after 30 minutes, not bad. And it is still very hot. And as always, the recipe is in the description box below. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching. Hey guys, you can click on the video icons for more recipes or you can click on my picture icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching.